ever wondered what the best fabrics are for curtains or how to arrange a cottage garden style planter? Maybe you're looking to find the perfect fridge freezer design or perhaps you'd just like to win a £1,000 gift voucher to spend on beautiful furniture by Donetti. Welcome to Roost, sponsored by Samsung, the show that's full of ideas to help you make the most of your home and garden. First up this week, Kitchen buying expert Lindsay Davis shares her tips for designing the perfect fridge freezer configuration. Fridge freezer design has advanced so much in recent years. No longer are you limited to undercounter options for small spaces, and for those wanting more storage for chilled foods, the choice goes way beyond the classic American style two door fridge freezer. The fridge freezers on offer now are as varied as the ingredients we store in them. What we eat and how we cook therefore has a big influence on which appliance we choose to buy. It makes sense to have as much room for perishable foods as possible in today's busy world. Gone are the days of picking up one or two fresh items at the shops on a daily basis. Busy households are buying more fresh food in one go with longer periods between shopping trips. Everyone takes turn playing chef too often meaning more cooks in the kitchen throughout the day and perhaps several meals being prepared to suit differing schedules. You need enough cold food storage space to accommodate lots of different recipes. There are lots of ways to this can be achieved too. Here are a few considerations. If you have a large family, you'll almost certainly need a big fridge freezer, but knowing what split of fridge to freezer space you need can be hard to measure. A good starting point is looking at your weekly shop and how many bags of chilled and frozen food you get through. Fridge capacity is listed in litres and an easy rule of thumb is to remember that every 10 to 20 litres of fridge freezer space will hold one big bag of groceries. Don't forget to allow for this, plus all the items that already live in your appliance. What you buy each week isn't the only deciding factor. The way you cook and eat it will determine if you need more fridge or freezer space. For example, those who enjoy batch cooking might start off needing lots of fridge storage for fresh ingredients, then have to find room in the freezer for all of their soup and casserole creations. Meal preppers will want a fridge with generous shelving for their stack containers, ready to go for the week ahead. And anyone with kids will know that whatever your intentions of living off freshly cooked meals every night, a few easy dinner options in the freezer are a must, as are ice lollies. Luckily, there are fridge freezers that can adapt to ever-changing meal requirements, so you're not wedded to one configuration. They have freezers that convert to fridges whenever you need. You have a few options with this technology. Some brands offer four-door models with one lower freezer compartment that can have the temperature raised from a freezing minus 23 to a fridge-friendly temperature of up to seven degrees Celsius. This means you can have half fridge, half freezer, or three quarters fridge. It is easy to change whenever you find yourself playing fridge Tetris. Others offer whole freestanding units that can be switched from freezer to fridge. This is probably best suited to the biggest households. Working in configuration with a freestanding fridge and perhaps complemented by a 70-30 or 50-50 fridge freezer. That way you don't have to sacrifice all of your freezer space at any point. The colourful Samsung bespoke range is perfectly designed for anyone needing this kind of appliance functionality. They offer fridges, freezers and 70-30 split fridge freezers of the same height that can be fixed together for a highly adaptable setup. They have flush doors with streamlined handles offering the look of integrated models but with the versatility of being freestanding. Great if you want to move them around in an open plan space. If you were to choose one of each from their 1.85 metre high range, so a fridge, freezer and fridge freezer, you could have up to 1,054 litres of food storage space at your fingertips. That's easily over 50 bags of groceries. It might sound like a lot, but festive feasting and summer barbecues are much easier when you can create more fridge space at the touch of a button, especially if you have a pawn shop for cheese and wine. Find out more about designing kitchens and choosing appliances on realhomes.com. If you want to find out more about kitchen design, then join us next week for Lindsay's advice on maximizing storage in your fridge freezer. 
Now, you might not think buying curtains is all that hard, but have you ever thought about the importance of the fabric you choose? I run you through my tips on choosing the right curtain fabric for your space. If you love natural light beaming through your home, but not when you need privacy, curtains are the perfect window treatment. But with so many options out there, figuring out what fabric would be right for your home can become quite a confusing task. Choosing the right material plays a big part in the look of the curtains and can make a real difference to the room you're hanging them in. So considering the mood of the room is a good starting point. Heavier fabrics like silk and velvet usually suit living rooms or snugs and can provide a little bit of extra insulation to add coziness. While it might be preferable to make large open plan living spaces feel more light and airy with sheer fabrics. If the room in question is a busy family space, more simple, practical and often washable options like rayon or cotton sateen will be just the ticket. Another really safe option would be cotton and cotton blends, which work well with most decor and look neat and crisp. Or if you're thinking of a more casual look, go for billowy linen or a crushed velvet. You'll also need to think about the direction your window faces in relation to the sun. If you want to optimise the amount of light entering your room, choose sheer or cotton curtains in soft fabrics rather than heavy drape. These materials will act more like a light diffuser rather than an out and out blocker. If you'd like to block a little light, linen curtains are a happy medium due to their textured weave. Heavy fabrics like velvets and silks will keep light from shining in altogether and will keep you cosy in your warm dark interior. Light can be a big issue in the bedroom for both kids and adults, particularly in the summer months when it's still light at 10pm. And if this is the case for you, go for blackout lining on your curtains to ensure you won't see the light of day. You can get this added in many fabric or home stores, or you can find a local seamster or seamstress. Keep in mind that in a room where the sun shines through unlined curtains, the colour of the curtains will infuse the room. If your windows get a lot of sunlight, dark coloured curtains will fade quickly. So look to add interlining fabric if you want to protect them against sun damage. When it comes to selecting a shade, the general rule of thumb is to pick curtains that are the same tone as the wall, but a few shades darker. Or choose a non-dominant subtle colour in the room, like a soft shade from a rug or a piece of art. It's worth ordering swatches of the fabric you like and ordering or holding them up against sofas, pillows and walls. You could even tape swatches to the wall and live with it for a while before making a final decision. If you're picking a curtain fabric or a colour that has a bold or vivid look, consider ways to integrate them into your space. These ochre ombre curtains from Clarissa Hulse make the bright statement lighting, bedding and velvet chair really pop. Including pattern curtains can be a tricky balance. Too little and your curtains can look boring, but too much and your space can look a little OTT, especially if you have existing patterned furniture or an elaborate rug. For a subtle hint of interest, go for a small neutral print like Dots or Paisley, which look like texture from afar. If you're feeling brave, a large graphic print in a colour that ties in or slightly clashes with the existing decor can look incredible if paired just right. With solid coloured furniture or bedding, you've got the freedom to go all out with patterned curtains. To strike the perfect balance, pick a simple pattern in neutral colours. For more inspiration and ideas for curtains and textiles, head to livingetc.com. Already got curtains? I'll be back next week with tips on choosing the softest bed sheets to snuggle into. Next up, gardening expert Teresa Conway shows us how to arrange a cottage garden style planter that's full of rustic charm. Cottage style gardens are huge at the moment as we all continue to embrace the outdoors and appreciate the joy that nature brings. It's perhaps no surprise that a more traditional approach to gardening is growing in popularity. 
But country style gardens are not just confined to the English countryside. The cottage garden look is one which can be achieved no matter where you live, even in small gardens in urban areas. It's all about those all important plant choices. So traditional cottage gardening encapsulates a handmade do-it-yourself style of living. So when it comes to planting, go for a mix of pretty flowers and edibles. Scented varieties should be chosen where possible as this all adds to the charm of a cottage garden. Many cottage garden plants are nectar rich and will be a magnet for pollinators, but avoid double headed varieties as insects can't get into the plants. Roses are always an essential ingredient in a cottage garden scheme. So if you don't have acres of space, the great news is that you can create this on a micro scale by potting up a container with quintessential cottage style plants. Here's how. Choose a good sized pot that's big enough to take a rose and some smaller plants around the edge and cover the bottom with some crocs for drainage. We're using some broken up polystyrene plug plant trays to line our pot. Then we're going to add some gravel to help it along. Next, we're going to fill the pot around three quarters full with a good all purpose peat free compost. Now using our hands, we're going to dig a hole in the center of the pot, packing the soil firmly to the outside so that it stays in place. Next, carefully remove the pot from your rose and drop the pot into the hole you've made. Gently place the rose into a temporary container for now. We'll come back to it shortly. Now our pot is in the hole, compress the soil tightly around it. We want it to stay in place when we lift the pot out again later. The point of doing this is to make sure that you leave enough space for the rose to go in the center once you've added your edging plants. Add some extra soil to bring the level up to near the top of the pot. Now we're going to add our small edging plants. We're using lobelia and bacopa around the edges, which should give us some lovely soft pastel petals and trailing white flowers. Place these around the edge of the pot, easing a space for them into the packed soil. Once they're in place, you can take more soil and fill any gaps between the plants and pack them in firmly. We don't mind a tight fit. Next, it's the tricky bit. We have to remove the rose pot from the center. This is where we hope our soil doesn't collapse. Lift it gently and lower the rose into its place, taking care not to let the walls crumble around it. Firm the rose into place and add a little more soil to ensure it's planted firmly. Finally, once everything's in, give it a good slosh of water and let it sit in a sunny place. Your pot display will have the best start possible if it's placed in its ideal growing conditions. So if you've chosen correctly, your container should hold plants which favor similar sun and soil conditions. They might prefer a more sheltered spot against a wall or fence to keep it protected from strong winds. Keep deadheading throughout the season and some plants will give you a second flush of flowers. If any perennials you've used get too big, lift and divide them at the end of the flowering season to increase your plant collection. They could be planted in a separate pot or you could find a permanent home for them in a well-chosen spot in a border. For more advice on cottage style gardens and other great gardening information, head to gardeningetc.com. For more gardening know-how, join Teresa next week for her tips on planting up succulents to make a dreamy arrangement. Now, are you looking for a sofa with a sink back factor? Does your working from home setup need an upgrade? Maybe you want to add some luxury to your Sunday lion. This week on Roost, sponsored by Samsung, we've teamed up with modern and contemporary furniture brand Danethi to offer one lucky winner a £1,000 voucher. Passionate about all elements of lifestyle and design culture, Donetti products are all about bringing beautiful designs and colour into your space. It's 
also expanded its collection for spring-summer 2021 to include home office, stylish bedroom storage solutions and a new collection of hand-woven rugs, perfect for completing your interior look and adding to the warm and plush feeling of your space. To be in with a chance of winning, simply head to one of the websites listed on your screen and fill in an entry form. Entries close at midnight on the 25th of August, so good luck! That's it for this week, but please join us next time for advice on maximising storage space in your fridge freezer, planting a winning succulent arrangement and choosing the softest sheets for the best night's kip. Oh, and we also have a total cleaning system for carpets, hard floors and upholstery from Vax worth over £1,000 to give away for one lucky viewer. Thanks so much for watching and remember to subscribe to the Future Homes Network YouTube channel for more great ideas for your home and garden.